Hi, thank you for joining me again. This is Sandra Hart, Life Over 60. And for those of you who have read my memoir, Behind the Magic Mirror, you're familiar with the story of my life up until the year 2002. I grew up in a gloomy Ohio Valley steel town on the banks of the Ohio River, and as a young woman realized my dream of leaving the industrial grime and smoke that I grew to hate. Attending college far away from home was not only a way out, but also during my years at school, life afforded me a break. I was asked to audition for Bert Claster. He was the creator of a popular children's television show called Romper Room. It was syndicated throughout the world. This occurrence changed my life forever, and I began a whirlwind of life-changing events that caused me to eventually lead a double life. My public persona was that of a successful anchor woman, but my private life was one of personal pain and constant terror. My mind was occupied with a stalker that had threatened my life, and in searching for the truth, I eventually discovered that it was none other than my beloved husband. He was eventually diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. In 1980, he disappeared from the face of the earth, never never to be heard from again. It took me 11 years to sort out the mystery of my husband's disappearance and to also sort out my feelings when I discovered the truth. When the ball dropped on New York Times Square in the millennium and we all survived, while entering the next century. I knew I couldn't put it off any longer. I had to tell my story. My initial plan was to combine a journal that I had kept while traveling the Nile River in 1984 with the story of my life and the investigation I started thereafter involving my husband's disappearance. I wasn't too sure that anyone but me would be interested in my emotional evolution during that prior journey to Egypt. So I gave my journal to several of my friends and family to read. They encouraged me to go ahead and to begin telling my story using my journal, but I decided to put it aside and just start telling my story right from the beginning as it was lived. After years of trying not to think about my life with my husband and his death, I thought that if and when I made the decision to validate my pain and let go of the anger, that there would be a great emotional healing that would release me, that there would be a great catharsis that would set me free. So then, why was I sitting there trying to fight back, not tears of joy, but of emptiness? Why was there no feeling of an end for me? An end to my life with him? A severing of the cord for once and for all? He was gone. And now I could get on with my life. But as I sat there, I knew there would be no end for me and no end for my children. How could I not have seen it before? Knowledge gives us power, but it would never give us complete closure. We can never erase the days and years he was a part of our lives. 
those memories we will carry forever. So I have traveled this long journey to discover that in the end, to find answers is just part of the closure. And it's not the most important in the trilogy of finding peace within. It's the confronting of truths and the forgiveness of trespasses against us that brings final peace and closure. So, that is my story. That is part of who I am. The answers I had looking for closure had released me to another journey that begins for me every day. I put my feet to the floor. I can't wait to see what is around the next bend in my after 60 road. And I thank all of you who are willing to travel with me as I experience life and living here on this planet. We're all so lucky enough to share together. I wrote a poem about this. It's called Conundrum. What words plea upon the page to tell my tale, expose my soul, so I can feel, so you can see what I know? Me. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until the next time.